That's a beautiful woman? What do you mean beautiful Carly trumps to Donald? I don't want to go into looks. That's not the issue. But looks, she doesn't have. And if I were the, the moderator, which I certainly wouldn't be because they wouldn't pick me, but if I were the moderator, I would have asked the Republicans these questions. What are Hillary Clinton's greatest policy failures? I would have gone down the list saying you each have 30 seconds to answer that. Then I would have said to all of them, what charges would you bring against Hillary uh, if you became president? The next question would be, would you indict Obama for any crimes if you became president? The next question would be, which federal departments would you reduce in size or eliminate when you become president? The next question would be, how would you defeat ISIS? The next question would have been, do you plan on holding Black Lives Matter and other racist groups like them accountable for their actions? The next question would have been, how do you plan on making our military strong again? Instead, they made the Republicans look like idiots by attacking them. But that's what you'd expect from a double talker like Jake Woodpecker or the unknown host from the Bush League uh, uh, network. MAL, Carol, go ahead. 30 seconds or less. What do you think of the debates? Yeah, well, um, I was a Trump supporter. I, I was a heavy Trump supporter. And when he made the comment about Fiorina, not that I specifically favor her, but I thought it was gratuitous, and I thought it revealed a character flaw, a big one. You mean he, he's the only one with a character flaw because he says that she's ugly? No. No, let me just say. I, I said it already. I, I think you're a Democrat plant trying to undermine Trump. You know you never supported him or any other Republican. Honest. If you did, you'd be a thoughtful person and you would say, you know what, so he's an idiot on women or he has a problem with women, but that doesn't disqualify him. Why would that disqualify him? Finish. He came up empty. Last night. Okay, so, so now you're going to vote for Hillary Clinton. Is that it? Because of that one remark? No, no. I want to vote for Jindal or I want to vote. Jindal? Are you kidding me? Jindal couldn't win a popularity contest in Mumbai. Jindal has no charisma whatsoever. How could you ever think that man could be president? I don't know. Look, we're going to get him today. We're going to get him all. Right here on the Savage Nation. Donald Trump said the following about you. Quote, look at that face. Would anyone vote for that? Can you imagine that, the face of our next president? Mr. Trump later said he was talking about your persona, not your appearance. Please feel free to respond what you think about his persona. Oh, let's stop right there. You know, I'd like to, ask, I'd like to, I'd like to say the same thing about the moderator. Take a look at that face. Would you want that face on a dollar? Would you like the face of the seat? Would you like the empty suit on a dollar, for God's sakes? What an embarrassment. I mean, I've known this guy for years. He tried to get me many years ago. Then he tried to get me again recently. He's a loser. He's a, a, low, a, low, a low feeder, a bottom feeder. And you know what's amazing to me? How the New York Post has shifted so drastically since, uh, who's the owner? I forget his name, the old man. I can't remember him. Murdoch gave the reins to his children. It's become a complete left-wing newspaper. Headline, beautiful Carly dominates the Trump. Tr clearly Trump's done. Carly Fiorina takes victory lap after the debate. Carly Fiorina's breakout performance, one of the most new Twitter followers. So why is Murdoch promoting Fiorina? Because he knows that Hillary can beat her. Because he's in all the way for Hillary Clinton, in my opinion. The entire news corporation, from Martha Washington on Fox News, all the way up and down the line, New York Post, magazines that he owns, they're all out to get Trump because he can beat Hillary and they want Hillary to win. So there it is. I mean, that, that's the analysis. Thank you very much for listening. I'm glad that you joined me today. Good night and good luck. That's the whole show. What do you want to talk about other than this garbage? There's a lot of other news out there. I'll get to it eventually. But the debate is already old news. What year is this? 2015. What month is this? September. When is the election? Uh, like, get back to me next September? 2016? Maybe most Americans might pay attention then. Can you give it a break for about a year? Because most Americans, uh, they heard about the debate. Maybe they watched it, but they really don't care. They know a few things by now. They know Trump is going to be the winner on the Republican side. And they know that Hillary Clinton, the liar, is hiding and won't debate anybody. 
because her poll numbers are sinking. And the more they see of Hillary, the less they like her. Therefore, Trump wins, which is a real shock and a, and a, and a, and a fright. So I don't know what you want to talk about. I have other topics. I'm not ready for them yet. I'll make the switch soon. I'll play Bobby Darren somewhere beyond the sea. And I actually watched the debate last night. I'd rather read my horoscope on air than, than talk about what Carly Fiorina says. But let's take some calls. Okay, here we go. Let's go. Let's see what we have here. Here we go. Here's another Trump basher. Will on KSFO, go ahead, please. Oh, I'm not a Trump basher. I'm, I'm along with you. Totally. I think that Jake Tapper was a Democratic shill. You know, his theme song is Warren G's Regulate. He uh, completely screwed it up. He, at least he iced out Dana Bash and Hugh Hewitt. At least he made them look like idiots. But don't you, don't you think... Hugh Dr. Hewitt is, a, you, you, is an unrated talk show host from a Bush League network. They chose him because he will do their bidding. Do you understand that? He's the representative, so-called, of the conservatives. He is not a conservative talker of any power whatsoever. No one listens to him. Don't he's, always, he's always chosen by networks to be, quote, radio talk show host. He has no audience. He's not in the top ten. He's nobody. But how really do you think Donald should... Donald knew they were coming after him. For God's sakes, Michael, don't you think that Donald knew... The Rolling Stone completely screwed up Stanley McChrystal and wiped him out by, by, by reporting that his officers were calling uh, Joe Biden, Joe bite me. Don't you think that he knew that Rolling Stone was going to screw him over? Don't you think he knew that that was going to happen? Don't you think he at least should have said, I'm on my jet, I'm, I'm watching TV. Wait, wait, hold on. What is Rolling Stone and McChrystal? Hold on. You're leaving me in the dust here. You, you just jump cut from Trump to Rolling Stone and McChrystal. What's the relationship? Well, Rolling Stone, it was a Rolling Stone article that wiped out, that, that, that finished McChrystal. You know, the, I understand, but what does that have to do with Donald Trump? She should have known he had the Rolling Stone guy with him for 10 days. He should have known that Rolling Stone was going to screw him over. Okay, but we weren't reading Rolling Stone last night. People were rolling joints and eating uh, whatever. But the thing is, what does that have to do with last night's debates? I'm not following you, Will. What, it mean, what I'm trying to say is Donald Trump should have known that Rolling... All right, I'm sure he did. I thank you for your listenership. I appreciate it. One more day like this, and I'm going to go into sports radio. Eight, five, oh, how about the vaccination question? You know who the big winner was? Trump. By the way, the illiterate moron, Jake Woodpecker, tried to trip him up on vaccination and try to make him into a clown. So he sets him up on vaccinations, and Trump gives the most intelligent answer I've ever read. He said, I'm in favor of vaccinations, but they do damage to children. They have to be given in smaller dosages over longer periods of time. That was an extremely intelligent answer. And the reason I know it was is because when they asked Dr. Carson the same question, Dr. Carson agreed with Donald Trump. It didn't work for them. And what's interesting is the same left wing vermin that attacked Dr. Carson a few weeks ago and called him every name under the sun and dismissed him. They're in love with Dr. Carson now, aren't they? All of the good liberals who use blacks, Hispanics, gays, lesbians, all of these good liberals are embracing Dr. Carson as a genius all of a sudden. Why? Because they figured they could use him to undermine Donald Trump. They're so naked in their, in their machinations that everyone can read right through them. So let's calm down a little bit. I'm only going to do this for a little while, and then we'll do the other stories of the day. And there are some. She didn't raise interest rates. Grandma did not raise interest rates. Janet Yenta, she runs the Federal Reserve somewhere in a toilet. Where does she run the Federal Reserve out of? Her grandmother's house in Brooklyn? I don't know what money she runs the Federal Reserve. Anyway, she didn't raise the rates. There she is. Grandma came out and said, nope, we're not raising the rates. No rate rise after all. So the gangsters of Wall Street can continue to rage. There will be no taxation, by the way, of hedge fund operators, I can guarantee you. They're far more powerful than you may imagine. They control the entire country. <laughs> they're the smartest people in the world. <laughs> you know, say hedge fund manager, they're like uh, your uncle, your brother, your father. What do you think, they're stupid? They're not evil. They're capitalists. They're making money. They're making it the, the way they know how to make it. And so, you say, hedge funds, they're all, not all evil, they actually build businesses too, you know. 
Most of, you, most of you don't know what a hedge fund is, but I won't bother explaining it to you. They are running the major corporations today, so they are America. Now, should they pay higher taxes? Yeah, that's certainly something I like to see everyone do, which is anyone who's paying such low taxes, such as Warren Buffett, should pay higher taxes, for example. Microsoft should fa pay their fair share of taxes. Facebook should pay their fair share of taxes, certainly. But, uh, you know, the new boogeyman is now the hedge fund operator. What is a hedge fund? Do you know what it actually is? Everyone, hedge fund, that's the new boogeyman, the hedge fund. What else is in the news? Who knows what's news? Wiener out of his job at powerhouse PR firm. Federal air marshals under investigation for filming sex with a, pro oh, come on. I'm not interested in this stuff. Let me go to my own website and see what I put up. And what happened to you? Coulter accused Republican candidates of pandering to effing Jews. Really? This already made it to the Israeli newspaper? Uh-oh. Ann Coulter tweeted, How many effing Jews do these people think there are in the United States? Uh-oh. What happened to old Ann? Ann Coulter then doubled down and said, Cruz, Huckabee, Rubio all mentioned Israel in their response to, What will America look like after your president? How many effing Jews do these people think there are in the United States? And you're starting to sound like a mean Irish drunk from the 1950s. The kind of Irish drunk who would go into a bar and have 10 shots and go out and beat up a Yid. And I'm surprised at you. You must have had something happen to you when you were a little kid to say a thing like that. You could have said, why does Israel dominate American politics, Anne? But you didn't, did you? Instead, you made it very personal about Jews. And surely you have Jewish friends. Controversial conservative pundit Ann Coulter, by the way, she's a has-been, incidentally, and uh, she was hot 20 years ago. I mean, the flipping, here's the whole reason. You have to ask, why does she do a thing like this? Who would commit suicide like that on a tweet? First of all, who tweets? People make mistakes when they tweet, when you can't take them back. They go out to a lot of people. So my advice to you is, if you're a public figure, stop tweeting. You're not that desperate for attention, are you? Get a dog, talk to a dog. The next time you want to tweet, pour a bowl of milk for a cat. But the fact of the matter is, these people are desperate for attention. I love that the conservative tweeters think that they're different than liberals, saying that it's a, an age of narcissism and Obama's a narcissist. If tweeting is not narcissism, what is? Day and night, you're uh, sending out your thoughts like the whole world cares what you think. The reason a woman of her intelligence would have done a thing like this, in my estimation, is because she was just jealous that she wasn't up there. Remember, in her heyday, she'd be on Fox News preening, flipping her hair, crossing her legs, the hacky, uh, gratty, uh, gur, uh, gur, uh, laugh. I think I forgot, Superman used to have so, the laugh, the, that hacky laugh, that kind of bar fly laugh that everyone likes, but kind of the uptown uh, bar fly laugh. That kind of bar up, up upscale bar fly laugh that men seem to like. So she would have been on Fox News sitting on a stool, better to show your legs, you know. And she would have been an immediate, let's go to our panel right now after the debate and ask them what they think. And what did you think happened today? Hair goes back, legs get crossed, uh, the bar laugh goes out, and there she was. But no one's asking her to the party anymore. So she's sitting at home. Very upset that she's locked out of it all. No radio shows. I guess the only one would have her on would be you, you, it maybe. Second, third tier radio hosts. And uh, she gets angry. So she attacks Jews. Furious. Not a good thing to do. Who else imploded during these debates other than her? Some people, by the way, their careers are over. I'm not one of them. In case you say, you're, no, my career's not over. It's doing very well, thanks. In fact, I have big plans right now for things that are going to happen that if they happen, there'll be career jumps that you can never imagine. Right now, I'm working on them, and I have, and there's things in the fire that are big. I, I made a decision over the last few weeks to get bigger rather than to diminish myself. I made some decisions. I'm not going to talk about them yet. You know I have the big book coming out, Government Zero, No Borders, No Language, No Culture, in a month. That's all I have on the horizon right now, but there's some very big moves being made by big people in Hollywood and in New York that may or may not come true. You know how things are. They start as ideas. 
And then uh, some ideas gel and some don't. 